sound familiar? On board, well, you only see what's on board. The corridors, engine room, deck, cabin. And when you finally do get away from the ship to go ashore, away from that tunnel vision of the onboard spaces, your view opens up to like a whole new world. Have you ever thought that? It's like a renewed feeling of what you're seeing around you. Even though you've maybe seen that same port before, same simple stores or trees, but it's the change of scenery, gaining a new perspective, a new view, even if you're only ashore for 15 minutes. It's something new that you see and you experience. It's that feeling and perspective I'm speaking of. And how can we create that new ashore perspective or new ashore feeling on board as an officer and for your crew. When we focus only on our inner world on board, it can kind of take away from what we're noticing and responding to around us. Every human wants to find meaning in their work and the ability to feel connected. As humans, we are wired to be social beings and we need interaction to survive. People also want to be heard and motivated. Research shows beliefs in the workplace can actually change the concrete results of your work. And in the workplace, mood is set from the top. So as officers, our mood influences our crew. What we say to them is like throwing a rock in the water and seeing the outward ripples. You are the rock sending the positive ripples out to your crew. It's your influence they feel and respond to, to their friends and family back home. You have the power to affect every single second on board. Nothing is more than a powerful motivator of creating a positive culture where healthy human connections matter. This awareness not only improves your crew, but the whole environment. It extends outward like the ripple effect. And it comes from awareness. Here's an example. You walk on the bridge and nobody acknowledges you, says nothing. Everyone is busy doing their own thing. And not saying something to that person who walked in is actually speaks volumes. You are communicating that that person is not worthy to be addressed with a hello, good afternoon. I get it. It's just autopilot mode, day in, day out. It's a robot mode that you probably have experienced, or simply, you just don't like the person. But let's circle back to the view from ashore, that feeling and a new perspective. Even if we lift our head up to look at the person and say, good afternoon, it's a small action with big impact. Now you might be saying, oh, I don't like that person, so I'm not gonna bother. And it's hard to overcome those feelings. Go to the ashore feeling. What would be the benefit for you to acknowledge them and the benefit for them? Apply that feeling of being assured. Look through a wider view that creates a more positive ripple effect. Acknowledging those that we work with on board is leading with dignity, treating crew with dignity and in turn earning their respect and supporting their well being. This is the 360 approach. Dr. Donna Hicks explains from her book, Leading with Dignity, that dignity is different than in respect. She explains that dignity is something we are born with, and I quote her book. Dignity is the glue that holds us together with our relationships and mutual recognition of the desire to be seen and heard and listened to, treated fairly to be recognized and understood and to feel safe in the world. It's our value and worth. She states, we all have dignity. Respect is something different. Respect must be earned. Dignity is something we deserve no matter what. And claiming our own dignity is that it's in our own hands, no matter how bad things are, makes us resilient. This helps us bounce back when we take a hit. And as an officer, this is important to realize to acknowledge our crew when they enter the room. It speaks volumes. We can't pretend that what we say and don't say won't affect others, especially on a ship where you live and where you work. How can you describe the feeling of vulnerability? Brene Brown, PhD, has done extensive research in vulnerability 
as well as courage, worthiness, and shame. Brene explains in our TED Talk from The Power of Vulnerability that shame is the fear of disconnection. If there is something that's about me that others see, maybe I'm not worthy to belong or connect, and that I'm not good enough, and we can't appear vulnerable, meaning weak. And on top of that, there might be cultural barriers that we're talking about when it comes to well-being, like bringing shame. It can be real in an environment where always appearing strong is the norm and little boundaries to separate your private life from your work life, and that can be challenging. And in some cultures, this can bring not only personal shame, but maybe shame to the family. Awareness about culture and conditioning is important. We all come from different cultures, different families, and even different spiritual beliefs. But why do our feelings about actions vary from person to person? One person might feel guilt and must fix a mistake immediately, and another person might feel shame and try to hide the mistake. Keep in mind, everyone's response varies depending on how they grew up, their parents or caregivers, life experiences, and beliefs. Being aware of these differences help understand the different responses and behaviors. What might freak me out won't freak you out. The important thing is don't let the differences make the difference. Awareness is key to create a supportive environment for you and your team. Awareness also comes with data and there's some strong seafarer data to help with awareness. In 2019, Yale University and ITF published a study called the Seafarer Mental Health Study by Dr. Raphael Lefkowitz and Martin Slade. The study had 1,572 seafarers from all over the world, different flags, different vessels, types, and ranks. The highest rated determinants of depression were found in a non-caring company culture. Even violence at work, experienced mostly from Eastern European countries and the Pacific Philippines. Low job satisfaction. And 35% of seafarers that were screened for having depression in this study asked nobody for help. This is the cycle we want to break. What can we do to break this cycle? environment where appearing strong is the norm. To start to create a shift, a change of these outcomes by giving little nudges, meaning small shifts of change for more positive culture. We will explore these starting with awareness. So here's a story for you. It's a personal one. I was working on board and I made a huge administration mistake by incorrectly listing passenger number, so the food calculation was completely off. This means that the money spent for each guest was overspent because of my numerical error. I had to tell my boss. Sitting across from his desk, I had the feeling of, ugh, basically spending money that we did not have. So when I admitted the mistake, my boss had said, what did you learn from this? I was not berated nor did he mention this to any other staff. He asked if I fixed the problem and how can I help preventing it in the future? But that wasn't the very end. He said, how are you feeling now? This was like a question of validation and belief. And he said, thank you for coming forward. And this comment validated me and it can validate your crew with dignity. It's scary to be vulnerable and to admit a mistake. And as an officer, how can you take dignity and culture and awareness to make your environment a better one? Stay tuned for segment three.